Well, with great pleasure, um, uh, we uh, want to invite our next speaker, our final speaker for today. Um, I'm just going to keep it very brief so that she can uh, carry on. But I actually only met her physic this year in um, just in Vrindavan so recently. So it was just amazing what I was hearing from her and the energy she has and the love and affection she has for Srila Gurudev. Um, and, you know, she's done so much publication work. She's traveled around with Srila Gurudev and she preaches. And she's just such an amazing uh, person, a ball of energy. And also, if anyone's seen any videos where Richard Tukit is in the video with Srila Gurudev, he's got this loving relationship with her. Um, and it's just a back and forth love that <laughs> anyone that's seen or witnessed would just be absolutely in love with. So with great pleasure and honor, I would like to invite our final speaker, Shrimati Vichitididi from Vrindavan. Hari Bol Didi, welcome. Hari Bol, can you hear me? Yes, you we see can me? hear you perfectly and see you oh, perfectly. Okay, all right, okay. Vanchakapa tu restra kripa sinivevicha patitanam pavane bio vaishna vidyo namo namaha. Mahat sangha mahat nyame vaitat paramad bhutam kritarto yena vipraso sadhya bhutat svarupavat. This is Sanatan Goswami saying this about the effect of Mahat Sangha in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. The glory of Mahat Sangha, the association of great men, is extremely wonderful. By the effect of such Sangha, the Brahmana, Jana Sharma, immediately became perfect like his, like his Gurudev, Sri Sarup. Sri Sanatan Goswami further clarifies this shlok in his commentary. You may say that one can get the Prem Seva of Rajendranandan Sri Krishna by performing various types of severe practices. And even then it is only after a long time that one receives the special mercy of Bhagavan. Considering this, how could this Brahmana have obtained such a rare thing without any endeavor? To clear this doubt, the Mahat Sangam verse has been written. In fact, the effect of a Mahat Purusha's Sangha is so glorious that without doing any sadhana, the Brahmana became perfect like his guru Sri Saru. One may ask how this impossible thing became possible. The answer is that such a doubt is not proper because the effect of a Mahat Purusha's Sangha is extremely, extremely miraculous and beyond logic. And therefore it can make anything happen. So I am a perfect example of this. Even before I met Trila Gurudev, I was brought to Vrindavan. I, had, I was wandering around India for some years. I'd been in ISKCON for 11 years and then I left. And then I was wandering around India, living in Jagannath Puri, looking for a guru again in South India. And then all of a sudden, I had no intentions of ever coming to live in Vrindavan because they say, you get the, uh, you know, if you make offenses, you get reaction. So I was afraid to come, but I was brought here, dropped down in Vrindavan in 1993, the beginning of the year. And then about a month later, I met Srila Gurudev. And so it's like Krishna brought me and it was my time to finally meet Sri Guru. So, and my whole life has been a complete, it's a miracle. How, how I've been living in Vrindavan now 28 years and I'm still, amazed that the Dom keeps me here. And Gurudev has made all arrangements for me. And I got to spend 18 years with Gurudev, living at the Mutt and Matuta so many times and going on Brejmanda Parikrama with him and traveling around the world with him. That first year he went, in the winter time, he went to Australia, 1996. Maybe it was 97. I wanted to go and I had no money. Nobody had, I kept begging people, can you give me money for a ticket? Can you give me money? No, nobody, nobody could help me. Gurudev was leaving. And I said, Gurudev, I wanted to come to Australia with you, but I don't have money for a ticket. Nobody could get me a ticket. I said, while you're gone, can you at least come in my dreams? Gurudev looked at me very seriously and he said, yes, you should come to me. Immediately, I got the message. Follow my example, do as I'm telling you, you know, give up all your attachments, give your heart to bhakti. So Gurudev was always so magnanimous and generous. So I wrote this, uh, 
offering for Gurudev. We were asked to write something. So I wrote this some months ago and I'll just, I'll read it and then I'll tell a few stories about Srila Gurudev with my experiences with him. Oh, greatest of all yogis, glittering as you float above the material manifestation, smiling, laughing, sending out beams of love and affection to one and all, opening up the Braj Leelas with your eyewitness reports of the daily events going on there, telling us who we really are, revealing the goal so that we can do bhajan, encouraging us to see ourselves there, inviting everyone to join you as you serve Yugal Kishore. Come and live in the garden of my heart, generous beyond measure, elegance emanating from every pore of your divine body, always in command of every situation, devoid of even a scent of sectarian spirit, capturing everyone with your irresistible charm. Your lotus, your lustrous golden aura emanating directly from Srimati Radhika's Angakanti, your inviting blue eyes reflecting the whole vast spiritual sky, all opulences and cities flowing from your fingertips and dancing at your feet. You, the goddess of fortune, bestowing that real wealth, Braj Bhakti. Brajnath Prabhu tells one. Oh, for some reason, you've just um, been. Touch the button by mistake. Now okay, we're opening no. it. Okay. okay. Yeah, sorry. Brajnath Prabhu tells one story. It was Kartik, and we were staying in Barsana. You invited Brejanath to stay in your room that night. So when it, he came to your room to take rest, he was surprised to see that the room was already crowded with about six people already stretched out on the floor. So he said to you, Gurudev, you're not inconvenienced by having so many people in your room? You fervently replied, I would like to have the whole world stay in my room with me. Who could imagine anyone so broad-minded? The beauty of the Vaishnava, it cannot be described, it can only be experienced. The very first time I went to meet you, I was told that you might be busy and I might have to wait quite some time for your darshan. But after just a few minutes, the doors to that private kunj magically opened and there you were, the moon of Mathura, sitting on your bed, welcoming me and inviting me to come very close to you. Many years later, I looked back on this event and got the feeling that you were expecting me, this wayward Jeev, wandering throughout countless universes and trillions and trillions of births. I finally experienced for the very first time in all my existence, real love. In this very moment, my whole existence became successful. Never before had I met such an open-hearted, exalted personality, someone who understood and cared for my real benefit. Without my even knowing, you snatched me up, put me in your pocket and claimed me as yours. Oh, how lucky I became. Wander no more, Betty. you are home. Never again will you ever be alone. You played a special role in our parampara boldly and confidently telling the world about the beauty and sweetness of Raj and the confidential purpose of Mahaprabhu's mission. Again and again, you explain the meaning of Swabhakti Shriyam, the beauty of Srimati Radhika, which is service to her, and the necessity of hearing about the love between Krishna and the gopis. You told us that 99% of the devotees who come to Mahaprabhu's line are manjaris by Swarup in Madur, Madur Ras. Srila Veda Vyas himself manifested the vast Vedas in this world, but was despondent until he went into meditation and saw the Braj Leelas, which he recorded in the 10th canto for the benefit of the whole world. Only then did he feel satisfied. This proves the utter necessity to hear about the Braj Leelas. You so delicately and joyfully communicated the selfless love of the Vrajavasis for Krishna and encouraged us to begin to see ourselves there in our eternal position as servants of Srimati Radharani under the guidance of Rupa Manjari. You instilled in us the hope that soon we would be able to enter Rag Marg and begin to perform real bhajan. You had only the highest expectations for us 
And like a loving mother and sensible father, you guided each of us personally to keep us on track, all the while pushing us to continue moving along. You urged us not to waste our precious time telling us that we should reach Nista, Nishta before your departure from this world. And one time you shocked us in Navadweep, you said, we must reach achieve liberation before you leave. Such a tall order. The first year I was with you, you were observing Guru Purnima in Mathura. I didn't attend the ceremony in the morning because I was suffering from the heat and I was covered with prickly heat rash. Instead, I went to honor you in the afternoon when the crowds had dispersed. I entered your room and you affectionately greeted me, asking, why didn't you come in this morning? Thousands of people came this morning and with every person coming in front of me, I was wondering, where's Vichitri? Where's Vichitri? Why she doesn't come? I was astonished that you noticed I had not come in the morning. I'm such an insignificant person. I'd hardly been with you a couple of months. How is it possible you thought of me during such a busy festival with hundreds of people around you? Then you told me, I am openly speaking about Braj Bhakti and the love that Krishna shares with the gopis. In all the Gaudiya Mats, they know about this Braj praying, but most of them will not tell about it to others. And some of them criticize me for doing this. Now it is easily available but only for the next 200 years, then it will go underground. It will be very difficult to meet a Rasik Vaishnav who can give it. Do you want it? Oh yes, Gurudev. If you, do, if you want it, you must take advantage now. If one does not try to go, does not try for it and go for it now, the Jeev may never have another chance. Many years later, at the end of your tour, tour in the United States one summer, you stopped overnight at Subal Saka's house in New Jersey before flying to Holland on your way back to India. It was your intention to take full rest to prepare yourself for the long journey. As fate would have it, Pundarik Brahmachari's relatives from North Carolina decided to come visit you. Six to eight adults and a few kids piled into a large rented van and drove up to New Jersey to take advantage of your pre precious presence one last time. All of them stayed in the basement of Subal's house. Needless to say, the house was bustling with so many adults and the kids running up and down the stairs all day long. So what was the question of you having some quiet private time? I observed how you gave up all thought for your own needs and selflessly gave yourself to your enthusiastic visitors. Some of them wanted initiation. One of them wanted first grain ceremony for her child and all of them simply wanted to chat with you. You kindly opened your door and graciously satisfied them. I was amazed to see this. In the mid -after afternoon around three or four o'clock, the house was quiet. Everyone was resting after initiations, fire ceremony and prashad. So I took advantage of this quiet time. And like a cat, I stealthily went to your door, gently opened it and peeped inside. There you were sitting peacefully chanting. I went inside and with great admiration, I said to you, Gurdjieff, you are Manchakalpaturu. Smiling with dancing bright eyes and practically jumping out of your chair to embrace me. You answered with great enthusiasm. Yes, and you are the root of that tree. I was taken aback. What? Don't go overboard, Gurudev. How can I possibly be the root? I just want to be one little twig on that tree. You thought for a moment and, pro and reconsidered and realized perhaps you had gone a little bit too far. So then you suggested a more reasonable reply. Yes, and you are the fragrance of that tree. Such a perfect, beautiful analogy you gave, seeing me in my pure Braj Swarup. To be the recipient of your deep affection and to bathe in the beauty of your open heart in this way was a special event for me. 
I never could have imagined the love and acceptance that you showered on me that day. As I relate this story now, I am feeling that joy still alive and growing. Follow the process, meditate on one verse at a time and mantra mai upasana will come. One Leela will manifest. Eventually all the Leelas will come together one after another in your mind and you will be able to do bhajan. The astonishing Bob of your guru will manifest in you also. Don't hanker for position. Oh. I lost my place. The mercy of Krishna will come if one is doing sadhana. No need to do anything else. And in Kantik Bhakta, one pointed devotee will get fully absorbed in bhajan and will still follow all vidi, all rules and regulations. Just like Radha in separation, she will embrace a tamal tree and think it is Krishna but she will never embrace Uddhava who looks just like Krishna because she will not transgress the rules of praying. Following this process, we will easily cross over the samsara. Remember Falvi Kraini, the fruit seller from Vrindavan. She made up her mind that today she would not leave without seeing Krishna. The sadak must have that same resolve. Day and night, I will practice bhakti as Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami instructed. With love, I will chant a fixed number of Hari Nam and with my whole energy serve Hari Guru Vaishnav. Every day I will study Srimad Bhagavatam and our Goswami Granth. I will not waste a minute. Every day I will recite Gopi Geet, Venu Geet, Brahma Geet. And if I meet a Rasik Vaishnav, I will dedicate my whole life to serving him. I will visit the places of Radha Krishna's secret leelas and piteously pray and recite poems full of longing. Then by the mercy of Sadguru, Sri Yugal Kishore will surely give me their darshan. This is the process. Again, Gurudev told us again and again how to do bhajan. He was spoon feeding us. And he had such great hopes for us. So I will dust myself with the kumkum of your words. Let me dwell in the protective, all encompassing cocoon of your heart, your instructions, your kata your smiles, your sarcastic chastisements, your tender glances. So I have notebooks and I have a couple of excerpts. I was always taking notes whenever Gurudev was speaking. He went for a morning walk in Seva Kunj in 2000. And I must have seen him from my veranda. I, I live on the wall of Seva Kunj. So I quickly ran and joined him in Seva Kunj. So I was walking behind him and he told us, Lalita was so thirsty for Krish, so thirsty. So Krishna made Lalita Kund for her in Seva Kund is Lalita Kund. But her thirst was not satisfied until she saw Krishna place his head, his flute and peacock feather at Srimati Radhika's lotus feet, begging her to give up her man. Smara galera kandanam mama shira simandanam dehi parapalavam udara. Gurudev would come up with, through his bhajan, tell us some the most confidential secrets, some of the most beautiful things about the Brajabhasis and life in Braj. He made it all come alive for us. Otherwise, how would we have known the beauty of Raj? So, there was one very wonderful experience I had. It was Kartik, after Kar Kartik in Vraj, my first year, 1993, was Srila Gurudev before I'd gone to the West. So the ISKCON GBCs used to come to him and he would give them very special private kata. So they made an arrangement for Gurudev to go with them to Surya Kund. And I was staying at the Mat. Then Vishak was there, Madan Mohan, Induleka. I think that's all. Only a, a handful of us Westerners were there. So the night before, I went to Gurudev and I'd heard 
that he was going to go to Surya Kund with them. I went to Gurudev, he was sitting outside his room and I said, Gurudev, can we come with you also? And, and I said, we could get a tempo and we could just follow behind. So he smiled and he nodded, you know, he liked the idea that we would come, we few Westerners. So what did he do? The next morning, we go out, so the ISKCON people come up. Ayodhapati was doing food for life program and he had a beautiful new bus and they were gonna take Gurudev privately in their bus to Surya Kund and have a private outing with him. So what had Gurudev done without telling anybody? He rented a minibus. And then he, and he had the brahmacharis, some brahmacharis prepare a huge pot of prasadam. And then he called us to come downstairs and he, Umaditi came also and quite a few brahmacharis and then we few Westerners and he punched me in the back and he said, get on that bus. So the Iskhan Wallas, they saw they didn't have Gurudev all to themselves. Their jaws dropped. They could not believe their eyes. They were so disappointed. And Gurudev enjoyed this like anything. So then we get out to Surya Kund and we're, we took darshan of Surya Dev. Then we went around to, um, it was a, was a Gorgonitai temple there on the other side of Surya Kund. And it was all still rough, you know, just a dirt floor there. And, and there was the crown of Radharani opposite that little temple inside there in stone that had been taken out of, of, um, of the Kund, Surya Kund. And so then we're sitting down and Gurudev's telling some Harikata. And then he's sitting to the side with Iskhan Wallas and the brahmachari starts serving prashad. So I'm with, oh, and Tunga Vidya was there, little Tungi, Bhaktin Tracy from the New York temple, Iskan temple. So we're sitting there and all of a sudden, Guru, you're sitting, Gurudev was sitting with the Iskan Wallas. He calls Tungi over to him and he says, he says to them, this is my, this is Tunga Vidya my newest baby daughter. Isn't she beautiful? So, and then he smiled at all of them because they had tried to give Gurudev an order that he was not to initiate anyone coming from ISKCON. So they could say nothing. They were silenced and Gurudev let them know, please don't try to control me. I will help any and everyone that I can. And then he carried on. And I'm sure they had a lovely time anyway, once they got the message, but Gurudev was so bold and he enjoyed that a lot telling them. Another time some Iskan sannyasis came, I happened to be at the Mat and Matura and they, didn't, they weren't regulars. They came just to tell Gurudev again, you know, that um, he should not interfere in Iskan affairs. And then they left. Gurudev comes out of his room. He was a little bit stunned by it. And he says, this is simply ignorance. Anyway, there was no controlling him. And it was so beautiful that um, Iskan actually couldn't open their doors to him. And so he started going to the West and, and um, somehow he manifested the money for me to be able to travel with him. And I, I um, joined him in America that first tour and it was very amazing because first place he went was Houston and, and he stayed at Bhimla Didi's house. And she said, she, she had always been greedy for money and her husband, they had a very lucrative business bringing um, Indian groceries into selling them in America. But she said, it was never enough, never enough. And she met Gurudev and instantly upon meeting him, he took that greed and that dissatisfaction out of her heart and she was peaceful. How he just instantly performed such a miracle for her and all the way you know, around the country, every place we went, we went to many houses in Houston and Houston's a huge city and long drives to get to different parts of the city. Kerr Dave didn't mind, he went to so many people's houses and every place we went, every time he started speaking, he started by glorifying 
Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and glorifying the great miracle that Prabhupada performed and how Gurudev had helped him and, and had so much regard for him. So it made a, a deep impression on my heart how Gurudev always put Prabhupada first and, and had so much regard for him and was always showing everybody, I'm not here to steal Prabhupada's thunder. I'm here to follow behind him and to help in any way I can. And this increased my faith in Gurudev so much. Then we went to California and we got to Los Angeles and we weren't made welcome. We, Gurudev wanted to visit every place where Srila Prabhupada had set his feet. He said, every place where Prabhupada preached is a holy place now. And we went to the Los Angeles the temple on Watsika Avenue and Gurudev wasn't exactly warmly greeted, but somehow, you know, Gurudev went and sat in Prabhupada's garden. And when we went into the temple and Gurudev saw the deities, we went up to Prabhupada's room and Gurudev saw all of Prabhupada's books in his room there. And Gurudev said, I sent Prabhupada all of these books. I packed them up and I brought them to the dock and I shipped them for him. So, and then we were leaving and, and it was a little bit shocking how they couldn't open their hearts to Gurudev, but they're lost. Then we ended up staying at, the Iskand Temple, the Radharam in, I can't remember the name of that, just just down, down the coast of a few miles from Los Angeles. And we stayed there and people were a little bit skeptical at first and Gurudev ended up winning everybody's hearts. And it was like that everywhere we went in California, Gurudev won everyone's hearts. We went to Badger and people were skeptical. And then every day, you know, he was just breaking down their barriers. And when we left, we went down to Los, to um, San Francisco and we had programs there. And every day, more and more devotees from Badger followed Gurudev down. They couldn't bear to be apart from him. And then, and he, it was just very beautiful to experience this, to witness all this. And then everybody from Badger came to Kartik that year. And, and it was, um, it was very beautiful. I felt so, uh, so fortunate that I was able to prop, to travel with Srila Gurudev and hear his Hari Kata be on in these festivals and do kirtan with him and dance with him. And so let's see. Oh, one time I was in Jagannath Puri with Srila Gurudev and it was Shiva Ratri and no other um, not many devotees were there. He never wanted people to come to Puri with him because he wanted to rest. So it was Shiva Ratri and he was staying in Sangania's house on the beach and I was there. And it was very windy in evening time and the wind kept blowing open his lungi. So, and then I was there and I saw, so what did he do? He, he pulls his lungi down, but then he kicked sand right in my face it's because I had seen his legs. So then we go inside, he goes inside, and one of his god brothers was there. Was, his name had been Nikunja Prabhu, big, big man, and he took sannyasa. Then his name was Pari, Pari Vrajata Maharaj. So he had great, he left Devananda Godima to be stay with Gurudev. And then he, um, Gurudev sat down in a chair and put his legs, feet up on the chair. And again, his lungi flew up and Gurudev started laughing wildly. And he says, Nanga Baba. He was in the mood of Shivji. And I never saw him. He was like an avidut that night. And then Parijatra, Parivajatik Marsh was brushing off the sand from Gurudev's feet. And then he took it in a piece of cloth and tied it up and put it in his pocket. He had so much love for Srila Gurudev. And then Gurudev wanted to go take darshan of Lokanath Maharaj, which is the Shivji. Um, near Sangani's house in that part of Puri. So Madhav Maharaj was coming and then Gurudev had Madhav Maharaj stand up and tell Shiv Tattva and it's very difficult. And Ma Gurudev was correcting Madhav Maharaj but he did really well. And then all of a sudden Gurudev started laughing again and they said, oh, your auto is here Gurudev to go to the temple. So Gurudev got up and just like a wild man, he went running out the door and took off and went to get Darshan of Mahadev. So I saw another time we were on Kartik Purikrama in Bandirva. And this was the early years. Gurudev was still walking 
everywhere and telling Harikata in every place. So from Bandirva, Bund, yeah, from the banyan tree, we walk across the fields and go to Vamshiva, where there's Sri Dham is still in the temple waiting for Krishna. So before you, we got to the fields, Gurudev all of a sudden comes bursting out of the trees and he sees me and he was very excited. He was in an inner mood and he sees me and he puts his hands up in the air and he's, he says, this is Kunj. And he was smiling and then he goes running off. So a few times I saw Gurudev like an avadut and other times so always so correct and correcting everybody and giving proper tafa siddhanta and always giving his love and affection to any and everyone who came near him. And he said, you know, Prahlad, Prahlad Maharaj got the benediction that everybody in our families will be delivered. You know, Nishringa Zayv said, don't worry, seven generations of a Kanish to get delivered. And I saw when my mother was, was leaving her body, I wasn't with her. I was in Badger with Gurudev. There was a festival going on. And I said, Gurudev, should I go be with her or not? And he said, if you want, you can. I said, I'd rather be with you and all the devotees. He said, so, so stay here. So then my sister was with my, my mother when she was leaving. And then I said to Gurudev, you know, can we call up my mother on the phone? If you say the Maha Mantra to her, then um, that'll have a lot of effect. I've said it, but it'll have more effect if you say it. And then Gurudev said, I don't even know your mother. But meanwhile, you know, I've called my mother, it was Ekadashi. So I performed Nirjal Ekadashi that day, right? It was being Nirjal Ekadashi. And I never do that, but I got the strength to do it that day. And I gave the results of that Ekadashi to my mother and she left her body the next morning at about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was very auspicious. And then, uh, I said to Gurudev, you know, I called up one of the nurses and talked to the nurse afterwards who was with my mother at the time of death. And she said, we never saw anyone leave their body like this. She was so peaceful. Everyone else is always so scared because the Yamadutas are there in the nursing homes ready to grab everybody. Everybody's so sinful. But your mother, she was so peaceful. We never saw this before. And because of this, your mother will always have a special place in our hearts. So I could see understand Gurudev's a man of his word he told me one time he, I said Gurudev what will happen to my mother she's done so much service you know she paid to print the, the Venu Geet she's paid for all my computers and I've, you know so many donations she's given you through me so he said I said but she's still sinful she eats meat and and one time he said to me did you get her to say the whole mantra I said she refuses and he says because she won't take Krishna's name Krishna won't take her but finally she did. I was visiting her bef just before I came to the festival in Badger. And I said to her, Mommy, can you say Gorhari? So she did. She said, Gorhari. Then she says, What does that mean? I said, He who steals away all our sufferings. And she was satisfied. So then I told this to Guru Dave and, and I said, um, You know, can, well, you know, what will happen to her at the time of death? And at that time, Gurudev, it was like an electric shock went through him. He sat up straight and he shouted out, I will be with her at the time of death. And indeed he was. So not only are we benefited, you know, Gurudev has brought me to live in Vrindavan. I'm still here 28 years. I'm in Vrindavan. I can't believe my good fortune. It's so miraculous to live here. And so in Gurudev's last instruction to everyone, Come to, the, come to the parikramas. He was in a wheelchair. It was just, you know, the last day at Kartik in, in, in Govardhan, at Govardhan. He came out into the veranda. There were hundreds of us standing at his door there. And he said, you must all come for Kartik parikrama and Navadweet parikrama. So people have stopped coming. I remember going to Badger a couple of years ago. I hadn't been in so many years. And I was telling everybody, come for Kartik. This is Gurudev's last instruction. And I offered to pay tickets for quite a few people. And nobody took up my offer and nobody would come. So it's like, you know, I read in some of my notebooks, Gurudev saying, why do we go to so much trouble? 
to go visit all of these places because by touching all of these places, your swarup is gradually being uncovered. And Srimad Bhagavatam is alive in every one of these places. And Gurudev himself would be so joyful to go to all of these places. And it was a total joy to be with him. We had a whole month, 30 days, being with him morning and evening and going to all these places. And, and so he's still, this is his last instruction. So there's a reason he, he wants us to do this. So I beg all of you, if, if people are allowed to come into India this year, you must come. Everyone must make an effort. There's a special reason. It's giving something very special to all of us. It's awakening our Atma because we're Brajabhasis. Gurudev said 99% of us are Srimati Radhika's Palyadasis. And we go to these places and it's, it's speeding up the process for us. So we should cooperate with Gurudev and follow his instructions best we can. And, and I hope to see many of you here as soon as possible. And I pray I be here eternally. It's so magical to live in Vrindavan. You can't imagine all of us are here. There's Vrindavan Dam is not easy because externally is just a million things. It's like I'm looking, I'm here how many years? I still don't get used to the some of the local customs. I think, are they, is this for real? Are they really doing this? Now Kumbh Mela has started. So what are they doing? They're tearing up the roads in Loy Bazaar and they're doing all this construction work, sand piles here, there. It's like, they couldn't do it before, you know? They have to wait till Kumbh Mela starts and now the town is packed with people. It's like, you know, but the this is, it's all done on purpose, I understand, to make, it's just something, it's all an internal experience here. So you should come and get Gurudev's mercy and the mercy of the Dham. And just one other thing, I remember I would travel with Gurudev and see him in the airports, and he always looked more brilliant, more effulgent, floating above everything there. And it was always made an impression. And I was recently listening to a darshan, Gurudev speaking with Satsarup Maharaj and some of the other Iskanwalas from 1990. And Satsarup says to Gurudev, I saw you in the airport and you looked more beautiful in the airport. So he also had that same experience that I had many times and how Gurudev blessed thousands and thousands of people traveling around going through the airports, people don't realize how fortunate they were just to see such a personality. Their spiritual life is guaranteed. Eventually they will be delivered. And Gurudev, oh, in um, Rupa Goswami compiled Mathura Mahatmya. This is verses that quote, are quoted from the different Puranas. And one of the verses says, anyone who does Brajmandal Parikrama under the guidance of a Shuddha Rasik Vaishnav and then goes out and other people see this during Karti and sees this person who did perform Parikrama, anybody who sees him will eventually achieve liberation. So we, became, we become touchstones. We, be, we help hundreds, thousands and thousands of people who ever see us. So, you know, do you, you know, come as soon as you can. It's so joyful and Gurudev's making all arrangements for us and we, you'll all be the winners. So I hope to see all of you here very soon. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vishnu. It's just, oh, man, we, I went through a whole heap of emotions with you. And anyone that um, has, um, I think, I can't remember how, what the figure was in terms of your notebooks that you have. I can't remember I about, what you said. I have about 20 I mean, notebooks. Yeah. <laughs> so um, on Vichita Didi's uh, Facebook page, she's taking um, extracts of these notebooks and posting them, and they're just absolutely stunning. Um, so if anyone gets a chance, please do go and watch, um, go and read them because they're absolutely amazing. Something that really encaptured what you were saying you know I was I was really shocked when uh, you said that uh, Srila Gurudev said that 99% of <laughs> us are Manjaris of yes. Shumati Radharani I was like whoa like you have not heard it uh, him I've never heard that before even yeah, though he I've didn't. heard him say it mm. 
he didn't say it that often, but I caught it at least once, twice, maybe. That's yeah. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And um, the other other thing about Parikram, like this is this is exactly it. And uh, um, we're trying to help encourage everyone to come. Uh, Yashoda Prabhu does this Mercy Leela Grace uh, program every Monday and Thursday, um, where we talk about the different pastime places. So everyone's got a build up to Gardik. So I think if we all pray together uh, for, for that, we'll all end up going to uh, Gardik for sure. And I'm sure with Gurudev's mercy and and Barambara's mercy and, and Vaishnavs like you, then we'll all be able to come and, you know, do Parikram together as, as Shila Gurudev wanted us to and how we used to, you know. Um, so I'm just really ever, ever grateful uh, to you for coming, actually. I know it's really late there, but also I think there's many devotees here that are really grateful to, to hearing from you. And I'm so glad that we, we managed to, um, Lavanga Didi um, helped to arrange this. We're so very, very fortunate. And I'm looking forward to coming to spend more time with you and learn so much from you. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> Good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You yeah, come. Have... I look forward to seeing you here. Everybody must come. This is our home. Vrindavan is our, our, our eternal home. We have to start cultivating that relationship. She's waiting for us.